this uh, model United Nations um, uh, here today uh, because it's always very valuable when you get together, uh, you exchange ideas, and you talk about issues and concerns that are happening in the world um, uh, in order to seek out uh, resolution uh, to some of the problems that happen um, every day. And um, so uh, thank you very much uh, for your participation. And I want to also thank uh, Ravi and his wife um, for starting up the Youth uh, Leadership Society of British Columbia and providing you all uh, with this uh, wonderful opportunity. Um, our youth are our future, and um, too often today uh, we see youth um, who are not uh, as engaged um, and who do not participate quite um, as much as we would like to see, and so. Um, I thank you for participating and for realizing um, the great benefit um, to becoming involved in your society and uh, being the change that you want to see. And uh, that's extremely important uh, for all of us. And please, if you ha ever have the opportunity to talk to your colleagues at school or university, um, about getting involved in something like this or getting involved um, in a political party or uh, getting involved with your local uh, MLA or your MP or your locally um, elected officials. Um, I encourage all of you uh, to do that uh, because it's extremely important for democracy uh, that we have uh, greater participation and engagement um, in our uh, society. So uh, it's a pleasure for me uh, to be able to be here um, and represent my constituents of Anmore, Belcara, Port Moody, and I have the Burquitlam part of Coquitlam in my riding. I'm also a parliamentary secretary to uh, the Honourable Peter Fassbender, Minister of Community, Sport and Cultural Development, and my role as his parliamentary secretary uh, is uh, local government and communities, and so I have a very unique opportunity uh, to create relationships with our local uh, elected officials. And of course, I uh, worked with Mayor Stewart um, as a former Coquitlam City Councillor uh, for many years. <laughs> and it was just a great experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, it was a, it was a great experience and um, working at the local level, um, it really grounds you um, because uh, you work uh, with the people in your community and um, when you're working at the provincial level or at the federal level, it is a wonderful uh, opportunity to have had that experience at the local level because I can see both sides um, of issues as they arise, both provincially and locally. And um, it, it's a great experience and I can understand, um, you know, whenever I do something or whenever decisions are made, I always think to myself, what would my constituents want me to do? Uh, what would my constituents want my government to do and having been elected at the local level um, gives me a better sense um, and uh, uh, of um, those things uh, that uh, our constituents would want us to do so um, thank you very much Ravi for asking me to speak and um, thank you to all of you for being here and please pass the word along that we need um, we need to clone you all um, <laughs> many times and uh, to get uh, um, our other uh, youth and young adults uh, involved in uh, this sort of thing um, so that you will become uh, engaged members of uh, your community. So thank you very much and uh, have a great evening. Yeah, uh, and I thank you very much. Yeah, that's how I normally get introduced. Normally they say, there's something really exciting happening, you guys are gonna be really, really happy about it. But first, we're gonna hear from Mayor Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wanna thank you for your comments. There are some elegant realities in those comments. Um, 
Linda Reamer mentioned that she and I used to work together. We both worked on city council. Uh, she did it apparently in the right order. Uh, most people who do local government and then a senior level of government do it in that order. The local government first and then the senior government. I did it in reverse. In 2001, I was elected to the BC, to the 37th parliament of the, uh, the parliament of the legislature of British Columbia. Uh, so I did the Legislative Assembly before I did local government. And then after that, I uh, joined City Council in 2005 and as mayor in 2008. Um, and I did get to work closely with, uh, at the time, City Councilor Linda Reamer. And she was then and is now the hardest working politician I know. She works, she works, I can't say that, publicly. she works hard. <laughs> she works her butt off. <laughs> um, and and it, she really does epitomize in some ways what a, a civil servant, a, an elected official, someone who is compassionate and passionate about their calling um, ought to do. And so I applaud uh, her and I applaud all of you because it's clear that as she said there's a room full here, there's a room full of people who are compassionate and passionate about what you want to do. And that's what's going to save this world. This world has many challenges, and we're handing them off to you. They're soon becoming yours. They're challenges that you spoke about. They're challenges like food, seco food security. Uh, I just went through several days of meetings in Metro Vancouver. Metro Vancouver is the fourth level of government, if you consider federal and provincial and then local. And in between there, there's a regional governance that's actually established by the province. The regional government allows that several communities that have, that share issues. Um, in our case, in Metro Vancouver's case, water, sewage, garbage, uh, air quality, regional planning, regional food security. Those kinds of issues can be dealt with at the regional level. And I'm the chair of the regional planning committee at Metro Vancouver, which deals with a wide range of issues like housing and agriculture and food security. And we have been struggling with food security. We have some enormous decisions to make and some enormous work to do with other levels of government because in most of, the, most of these cases, it's actually the provincial or the federal government that has authority over a range of public policy and uh, whether it's how you avoid the con continual subdivision of farms to the point where they no longer are viable, whether it's the industrialization of farmland and those sorts of things. These are, these are issues that if we don't solve them, you won't get to. If we don't solve them, you won't get to because the issue will have evaporated the regional food capacity of Metro Vancouver. So these are massive issues that exist in every country of the world. And so the UN model parliament, I have had, I participated when I was in provincial office and, and again as mayor, I part, when, I was, when I was in Victoria, I participated in every model parliament I could. If model parliament was coming to Victoria, I got there. And I got to stand in the legislative assembly and speak to young people who were passionate and were willing to spend a pretty nice Saturday in a room doing things that they won't be able to explain to most of their friends who don't understand why you would spend a pretty nice Saturday in this room. And I would go to those model parliaments and I would be always encouraged by the level of compassion and passion about the country that we call home. Uh, in fact, I'm going off to Rotterdam in about two weeks to, again to speak to, to deal with, uh, it's a conference on food security and a conference on a wide range of issues associated with ports and shipping, uh, because that's certainly one of the massive challenges that we're facing. Today is also the Terry Fox run day. Terry Fox is a young man who, like you, had lots of goals, lots of things that he wanted to do. He had lots of compassion and lots of passion. And because of something that happened to him as a young person, he decided to take on a challenge that most of us didn't believe was possible. 
and uh, Linda's way too young to remember this, but I remember it very clearly. When we, the first news story appeared on the television about this young man that was going to run across Canada. And at that point, I re remembered him. I recognized him because I used to be a lifeguard at Glen Glenpool, which is near his home. And we'd see this fellow with one leg and a, and a prosthetic leg hopping down the road as he practiced. It was his training route. I knew him at Simon Fraser University. Oh, you did. Yes, there you go. Yep. Well, those of us who grew up in the era of Terry Fox can remember this young man as just a human being who did an amazing thing that no one else. Today's young people perhaps think of him as uh, almost superhuman, but he was you. He took on something that was bigger than himself, and he didn't believe any of the people who said it was impossible. And that's usually how you get things done. Uh, someone mentioned farmers markets. Today I was at farmer, the farmer's market as well. The farmer's market is, a, is where we put food security in action. Uh, I was there actually hosting uh, a widow and her family. Uh, we're, we're working with them. They're, they're struggling. They're from Syria. They're actually uh, Turkish, they're Turkish language. Uh, so it's even worse than the Arabic ones because the Arabic ones, at least we have translators for them, and I don't have a, Syri uh, a Turkish translator, so um, it was all sign language. Um, as we put in place a program that the province actually has put in place uh, for food vouchers that allows uh, refugee families to get into the food, the, the, the sustainable realities associated with farmer's market. And so I applaud the province for that kind of program. But there's programs like that that we as a country and we as a world have to put in place. And you have spent the day talking about some of the challenges and some of the opportunities that exist if we want to move forward in a sustainable way. My daughter has mental illness, and today she imploded at the Terry Fox run when we were there, and uh, didn't get to go to the farmer's market with me. And I, I, I say that because there's lots of other issues that we as a society and we as a world have to tackle. We have to be able to talk about the challenges that the world faces. Each one of us and each country of the world has to be able to remove the stigma of mental illness, of addictions, of the kinds of challenges that we as a world face. Because if we don't, and AIDS will make Africa crumble, then mental illness will make young people crumble. We have to do that, and I applaud all of you. The last, my last comment uh, is one that uh, Linda mentioned as well. Vote. Vote as often as you can. Well, just, just the one time every election. You know? <laughs> Don't figure out a way to vote more often. Um, I, uh, when I first got into politics, and Linda will remember the moment when you're, when you're door knocking a neighborhood and you get to a, a door. I got to a door and this fellow from Eastern Europe, I would say in Eastern Europe, being thick accent, I answered the door and he was, when he knew what I was there for, he was angry. Not at me, he was just angry. And he explained that he had left everything he owned, everything in his life. He left his family, he left his job, his career, his home. He left the country he was born in. And he came to Canada so that he could vote. That's why he came to Canada, for freedom and democracy. And he said, the people in my neighborhood, these people in those other houses, most of them don't even vote. And he was angry about that because those of us who were born here might well have some complacency about the issue of voting. Might well have complacency or perhaps even disdain for the profession that Linda dedicated her life to and that I have dedicated my life to, the, the profession of public service. I won't call it politics because that's a different profession entirely. Unfortunately, they, they often get muddied. But democracy requires that some people like you, some passionate and compassionate people, decide to go into public life and decide to 
put their put everything on the line because that's what you do. It means that everything you do will be questioned and half the people will hate you and the reality is that we need good people to run for office. We need good people to put their names forward. We need good people to support those that run for office and put their names forward and we need everybody to vote. And uh, today you've raised my spirits, you've, you've made me, me see and I think Linda feels the same a lot of optimism, and we need to clone you all. So thank you all for coming out today.